How are you doing today, Abe? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Good, good. I'm so thrilled to be speaking with you. I love the flight attendant and it, particularly your role on this show. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. You can tell me if I'm correct, but it seems like Max is the only one who's like having a good time. That he's <laughs> part of this adventure and he knows that there's high stakes, but he's also, he's really excited about it. I think it, it's something we found early in the first season that he's very curious and enjoys the the puzzle and the mystery of it all. And that's why in the first season, he, I mean, he says it was for Annie and yes, there was a big part of Annie uh, that he got involved for, but it was really this curiosity that hopefully won't kill the cat, but it's gotten a little really close as we've gone through. So what was your role supposed to be when you signed on? Were you eventually going to be promoted to a series regular? That's because audiences responded well to you. I look, I, I was very fortunate like that when I, well, initially it was just a get it was a guest star reoccurring and that was uh, i was i was so excited to be a part of the show because you could for, we had the first two scripts when um, we were going through and you could tell this was gonna be something special but you never know um and then as we went through i was reading the scripts and then my character got hit by a car and i was like oh yeah well that was a fun run that, you know that's a nice death here would maybe catapult whatever and so i was very happy to be woken up by that uh, coma and have the option for this second one and then, um, you know, there were uh, the as the show came out, we were really fortunate that people really responded to what Zasha and I were doing, and it just sort of snowballed for there. And then we're now back for more and at a bigger scale, which is just, you know, I it, it, the show is so much fun. So it's it's a real blessing. I think it's a good sign for a character death not to mean much when the main, one of the main characters dies in the first episode, but he's a, a part of the entire first season, you know? Well, I, I, yeah, I, I, there was, I didn't think there was going to be a world where that happens twice for my character as well. So it, it, was, uh, it was a pleasant surprise to be waking up in the hospital and then um, continue on for more. I also do think that Max and Alex would get along, at least the Alex that we come to know. I don't know what yeah. you think. I think so. I didn't even, I, I actually never thought about that until now. Those worlds would, if they had crossed, I think they would. I think Max is the very happy go lucky. And I think, he, like, as you see, this for a second season, very drawn to people cooler and larger than life. And I think Alex was a much, a much like that, just like Marco is in this season. Right. We did get to see, at least in the early half of the season, some, you know, a little fulfillment with Marco, at least being happy to see me if he didn't realize quite how much of a, a crush he had on him. Yeah. I mean, when you look at it, like, I mean, the, Again, this uh, this idea that Max is such a curious puppy dog like a person, he has that innate experience. He's just drawn to people, and Marco, and you know, played by Santiago, who's just obviously very cool and very suave as a person. Um, it's kind of hard not to see why you wouldn't be like drawn in and sucked into that world. And I love all of your scenes with Sasha. What is it like working with her? Uh, um, awful, just a pain, just the worst. Um, she's delightful yeah like I was saying it was like one of these things where I came on not knowing how long the show you know my character was going to go through and we were just really fortunate we didn't there was no chemistry read or anything like that I was I rocked up first day in a towel my you know walking out of the shower scene was my first day and so I met everyone like that and then uh, we had a lot of a, a chunk of our scenes that for the first couple of weeks with Zasha in the first season and really it just sort of like there was a banter that just sort of clicked and it, it like we we're just trying to make each other laugh and trying to just trying to put the other one off and that sort of evolved into their relationship. And like, it is an unconventional relationship. One that I don't think many people understand. That's always been a lot of feedback being like, why are these people together? But on paper, it doesn't, when you read it, it's like, doesn't make sense. But when we get in the room and Zash is so brilliant that, you know, together we really have formed this relationship that's quite unique and quite special. And so I'm really excited this season. We actually really got to explore that a lot more and go into that a lot more. Are any of your scenes improvised? There's a lot of improvisation. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, it, you, can, you can tell how late in the day we film some scenes because they get more off the wall as they go. And the very talented Steve and Natalie bring us all back in and all the directors and Silver and that have sort of reeled us in. But they give, they're really generous in the sense that they give us the space to play. And then there's been an amount of times where something, you know, is just, we discover and they capitalize on and or we, we discover it because something, something's bumping us and it, it's, a very dynamic set that not only Zasha, but Kaylee, like we can all sort of come and collaborate together and to create the truth, the truth of the moment, the truth of the story and further along. And of course, cause it's a fun show, you get carried away and you got to come back, but there is a lot of, of that that stays in that's helping move the story forward. I haven't finished the season yet. So I'm not sure if there's more that comes, but what did you like about exploring Max's family? 
Um, <laughs> I was very surprised at how spot on the mannerisms of both the mother and father were close to mine and having them not casting, not even knowing my parents, I was kind of taken back that this is the magic of casting them, you know, the all powerful knowing casting that have to be able to pick it so well. Um, I do love that we, you, you know, you, you saw where that innate, it's like, uh, you know, like curiosity and, uh, and sort of, not weirdness, but just that, you know, that, that uh, uh, outcastness of uh, Max comes from. And I, I was really happy that they had the time to really explore that. And I think it was a, you know, a good opportunity to change, to challenge and test this relationship that seemingly, it, you know, as you know, it works at times really well, but now as we see also there's a flip side that it, it really can be pushed to the edge. And that, of course, led directly into the one of the most intense scenes of the season, which looked like it was going to be worse for Max than his car accident with some torture and possibly certain death. But then almost, you know, very strange that they just left, which was very, very interesting. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, Max, much appreciated by Max. Um, but yeah, I mean, once again, he's, he's th thrown into the deep end of it. And um, I think the, where they were at with their relationship, where he, you know, her taking off that ring and um, that that was like such a symbol of his love. Yes, they have a weird banter and yes, they don't really get along. Like, you know, they Conventionally, um, her accepting that ring and wearing it was like, oh, that's amazing. She accepts my love. And then by taking that symbol of love off before meeting very crucial, you know, his beloved family was such a big betrayal that it's kind of hard to see how they would come back and being thrown into this dangerous situation. It's been nice to, to put that relationship uh, to the test and, you know, we, we were, while we were filming, filming that, we're like, how do these, I don't know if, if they weren't put into that danger, would they be able to come back from it? Yeah. And I remember being very excited that season two was commissioned because I think I had just finished season one like a day before and I was very, very happy. Right. Do you think there'll be a season three and without spoiling anything, could Max return? I guess that, uh, well, you shouldn't answer. Well, you, you go ahead. <laughs> I was, Okay, look, I will say, I don't want to spoil anything, um, but... Uh, we've, we've, Zasha and I have pitched ne uh, numerous spin offs and Christmas specials that may have fallen on deaf ears, but they were pitched. Um, and uh, some delightful ones where like Annie's Revenge, where Max is struggling with her murderous rage that somehow comes about. Um, look, there's, there's, uh, the mystery goes on till the very end, and um, they're along for the ride the entire way, and you know. Yeah, I, I don't want to give, give anything away, but if 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 there was a world, we we I didn't think that there would be a world where they could do a season two. Like the story is completely departed from the books, and they created such a beautiful one. And if I'm sure the uh, you know the powers that be are able to do that again for a third, if they if it goes again, that sounds great. I've also seen you on some other shows like The Cleaning Lady and especially United States of Al, which is something that I I really, I don't even think I recognized you, but I just, I, I like that show and it's it's so completely different from this one. What was it like guest starring there? It was, so, th so that was a unique experience. They all went to Iceland and so I had some time off and then this opportunity came up and I was like, oh yeah, I've never done a, um, a multicam. I've always watched them. I've grown up on them, grown up on Seinfeld, grown up on like Friends and Will and Grace and love these shows. And it was a unique experience that they still didn't have audiences, but it was still like the multicam world. And it was just, it was so much fun. It was, I had such a blast and I was, I, you know, a character that came in only briefly here. I wish I had time to do more of it, but we had to go back and do the job that I was already on. <laughs> um, so, uh, but yeah, I like, I had such a blast doing that. And it was very, it was very different to what I mean, dealing with. I mean, there is a heightened reality in flight attendant, but that world it's, it's, it's so like, it's so different and so unique. And I was very um, happy to be a part of it. And again, the cleaning lady, again, was something that was so different as well. Like these, uh, uh, the, that role was something very different than I've done before in the past. And I was really uh, uh, pleasantly uh, to do that opportunity. And again, that was something that fly attendant drew me away from as well. So I hope to return to that. And I think there might be a possibility. They sent me, they had to send me away for that one off to fight the good fight in Abazajan and Armenia for that one. But uh, that was also a lovely experience because they're telling a beautiful story about, you know, that you don't really see on network television. Um, it mixed obviously with the crime and the drama, which I'm more heavily involved in, but I, th I think cleaning ladies, are, uh, they've done really well in telling such a unique story. 
Yeah. I also have to take a moment to compliment your American accent because I think it's, I had no idea. Like I watched a video of you ahead of time. I want to make sure I could pronounce your, your name correctly, uh, which you, you have a video of you pronouncing your own name, which is great because it's often hard to find that. So I oh, always really? look Do for I? Okay, great. <laughs> Some people, someone else introduces them, but they say it wrong. And like, that's not how I don't want to mimic someone else, but I didn't even say it at the beginning. Uh, but your accent, I mean, it's, it must also be very difficult to act in all these heightened emotional scenes with a different accent than your own. Is that, do you find that challenging? I, I look, I've, I've been, I've been doing this for a long time now for, uh, since I was like 16, 17 uh, working in Australia and it became very apparent very quickly that if you, uh, just the opportunities from someone of my ethnicity isn't really available in Australia. It was limited uh, opportunities and I was able to capitalize on the ones I had. So I was very grateful and very fortunate, but I knew the move had to be to the States. So very early on, I was like, well, I should probably get an American accent. <laughs> so there was hours of training and um, working with it. So that, like you said, it's the last thing I worry about now. Like I don't have to, if I'm, if I'm thinking about the accent and then that I can't be truthful and in the moment and paying attention to what's happening in front of me and there's so much always, I mean, I'm, I'm very blessed to be in front of some powerhouses. So if you, if you miss a moment of it, you're left behind. Um, so it was something I started early on. That was actually a really lovely foundation work that's helped me be able to play, uh, you know, roles that are English. Like I have done the Colombian accents and like, uh, you, and it, it, this dialect is such a, another craft of ours that is able to, you're able to tap into and it opens so many more doors and stories and characters that you wouldn't be able to play before if you didn't have that foundation. So you know, it was, it was a lot. I mean, early on, it was kind of like, oh, I've got to do this like, like American accent work, but it was like, it was a, it was a bit of a burden, but now it's become a, quite a, a strength in the long run, which has been, I'm really fortunate for. That's great. And do you have any other upcoming projects you can share? Yeah, I literally just got, so I, this, this is like midday for me. Cause I literally got back from New York. I was filming a, a film uh, called Beth and Don with Julia Lewis-Dreyfus. Um, she's reunited with Nicole. They had done um, just enough, uh, uh, um, uh, enough said, just enough said, sorry. Um, uh, this, this is the new film that we're uh, coming back on and I get to play um, opposite Julia Lewis-Dreyfus. So again, I grew up on Seinfeld. I grew up on Veep. Um, uh, it was a surreal experience. So th that was really fun. I'm looking forward to that coming out. And then um, I think... You know, hopefully we got more of Cleaning Lady to come as well. They've, they've been picked up. So if the, if the story uh, allows it and the time allows it and the schedule allows it, I think we'll be back there doing more. That sounds great. And I can't wait for the Annie and Max uh, Christmas special or whatever it is that's coming. Yeah, I think the Christmas special is going to be a good one. Hopefully, I, I think that's the only one that's got legs because it's, it's condensed. You can, a spinoff is like an entire season. That's a lot of money. Whereas like a spinoff, oh, sorry, a Christmas special, it's like a, it's an episode, 40 minutes. I think, I think HBO Max has got that in the, the piggy bank. There you go. You heard, you heard it here first. Thanks so much, Dennis. <laughs> it's really nice to meet you. Likewise, mate. You take care. Cheers. Take care.